Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iOS Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Coming up, Skitch from Evernote is on its way out. So we have some alternatives, plus a few alternatives for Evernote. Just and in case. we're going to answer a plethora of your questions. I hate that word, but that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Or a pestle. Or perfusion. Or dozens. Mm -hmm. uh, and I infantilize myself by coloring with a $100 pencil. <laughs> it's iOS Today! <laughs> iOS Today is brought to you by Gazelle, the online marketplace for buying and selling used gadgets. Shop from a variety of certified pre-owned electronics or trade one in for cash. Give new life to a used device at gazelle.com today. And by audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash iOS today. And by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash iOS today. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash iOS today. <laughs> You're using my words against me, aren't you, Maroney? It's iOS Today time. Welcome, everybody. Yes. I'm Leo Laporte. I am Megan Maroney. And this is the show where we talk about not just the iPad. It used mm -hmm. to be iPad today, but we decided to broaden our range to include the iPhone, the Apple Watch, and the Apple TV. Mm -hmm. All the OSs. All the OSs. And, you know, last night was a 60 Minutes uh, interview with Tim Cook. I missed it. Jobs. And Johnny Ive was on. Johnny Ive, Angela Ahrens, who's oh, camera shy. We've never seen her yeah. in public. Right. Well. That's not quite true. But she doesn't we, like to be interviewed. She, yeah, and she's not been on stage at any of the Apple events. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm have to go back and watch it. I'm yes. sure it's on demand somewhere. I didn't watch it. Uh, I was watching the football game, and I realized, oh, shoot, it, and it was 6.40 or 7.40. And uh, so I, uh, I knew they were going to be on, and I, though I caught the last sentence mm -hmm. where uh, Charlie Rose, they're looking at the new building, says, where's your office, Johnny Ive? And he says, on the top floor. And that's it. And then it was over. And so I've, I'm, tell me about it. Well, it's great. And for anyone who follows, you know, Apple meticulously and wants to see all the secrets. Um, you Did know, we? We, the, no. I mean, but everything, <laughs> it's, uh, on the internet, it's like, I don't know who's worse. The people, like, finding Easter eggs in Star Wars or on oh. the Apple interview. Like, what did we see? There's something under a sheet. Because we went to uh, Johnny Ives' secret design lab, but everything was covered, or was covered. most most of the uninteresting stuff was covered with sheets. Yeah, prototypes and yeah. such. Yeah. Uh, that was interesting. I thought it was interesting uh, what Tim Cook said about privacy. You know, he what? had, um, just that we shouldn't, it's not as simple as everyone's making it out to be. We shouldn't have to exchange our privacy for national security. Security. Thank you. Like, there's a way to do both. Good. And I think that was good. Uh, something that Phil Schiller said that I thought was really interesting. He's the uh, chief of marketing at Apple. Yes, and now in charge of the App Store. Now yeah, we too. should say Tim Cook, CEO. Mm -hmm. Angela Arentz is in charge of retail. Mm -hmm. uh, Johnny Ive, we mentioned, is their chief design officer. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Phil Schiller is their chief marketing right, officer. Right, and now he's in charge of the App Store, too. And the App yes. Store, which is actually huge because yeah. we've said for a long time they need a czar to kind of kick some butt at the mm -hmm. App Store because there's real issues there. And you know how we always say, like, well, why, you know, is my iPad going to replace my MacBook? Is my iPhone going to replace, is my Apple Watch going to replace my iPhone? He said something really interesting. I'll just read the quote. The iPhone has to become so great that you don't know why you want an iPad. The iPad has to be so yeah. great that you don't know why you want a notebook. Mm -hmm. The notebook has to be so great you don't know why you want a desktop. Each one's job is to compete with the other one. He has said that before. In fact, there's a long blog post about kind of parsing that and, and he also says and he may not have said it on 60 minutes that the apple watch is supposed to the, replace the iphone mm -hmm. but i don't think that that's really what they want obviously right. they want to sell them all yeah but it does kind of position everything logically enough in in a in a hierarchy so you use a macintosh the, the full computer when you have to do something that nothing else can do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it goes on down from that. It, the iPad is a, is a great alternative when your iPhone just won't have enough oomph or enough screen real estate to do it. Your iPhone's great when your watch won't do it. And if your watch will do it, then you should do it on the watch. And I think that kind of makes sense. Yeah. In fact, so much so that it doesn't really feel like it's revealing any secrets. Mm -hmm. They don't, but don't think that means that they want 
they you to stop buying iPhones. They no. they really do want you to keep <laughs> buying iPhones. Exactly. And I got an email recently too from someone who was like, "You guys get all the devices, so it's hard because, you know, what about the people that only can buy one thing? Which you know? should you buy? Yeah, right. which should you buy? So that's something that I've been thinking about too because we do we do, you know, you do get all the devices. Uh, well, I think everybody should have a computer. Right. And that, but that doesn't replace a phone. I think if you had the uh, the app, the iPhone six, and I would get the six S plus because it's big enough to replace an iPad, and a Macintosh, I would get the five K iMac because that's the best Mac they make and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's probably ninety percent of the functionality that you want. Mm -hmm. So the watch is a little bit is probably of all of them the most expendable, and the iPad. Unless you have specific needs. You know, I just gave the iPad Pro to my mom for Christmas because she's an artist. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm really frustrated because they said the pencil won't come to mid-January. So I'm going to oh. steal somebody's pencil. Oh. I notice you have one. And send it to my mom because she's an artist. And she's, you know, she used to draw on a Windows machine using a program called Dabbler. And she loved it because it was easy to use. The controls slid in and out. And it had natural media. So it would have, you know... Uh, kind of crinkly paper and it would have watercolor or tempera paints or oils or acrylics charcoal and she loved that because she's a real artist she loved the natural media on the iPad and in fact uh, I told her get procreate I sent her a certificate for procreate she bought it and she's in love that's an example of something you really can't get that experience on a Mac she was doing it on an iPhone 6 plus it's not the same. No. And so she loves the iPad. But those are unusual. Those are specific tasks that you really want to do. For 90%, for the other 90%, don't you think uh, an iPhone, you don't need an iPad? Yes, yeah. For and sure. a Mac is there because you need a power tool for mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, there was interesting, uh, the Pew Center for Research, I reported this on Tech News Today this morning, they had a big study on broadband. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, broadband is plateauing. Like there's people are getting more, more people are just using LTE. Phone. Yeah, yeah just, it's fast enough. It's, fa it's fast enough. But then what they said was for like some generally marginalized people, the poor, um, people living in rural areas, African-Americans, it's not uh, as good. You can't do everything. You can't, um, it's not as easy for people uh, to look up services Banking, or apply for like a job yeah. or, you know, all these things. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting because we, we think, oh, yeah, like I could get away without my phone. But there are things that you really need to do uh, that you can't always do as easily on a phone that you really need broadband for. It's pretty much tied to either income or access, I think. Mm -hmm. If you're, you see rural residents, they, their, their problem is that there just isn't, in many cases, uh, high-speed Internet mm -hmm. landline or via cable. Yeah. Uh, and, or if you're poor, that's a 60-buck bill you just would like to do a month that you would right. like to do without. So I can understand but that. But instead, you, but boy, you this use is, a... But, okay... Fine, Pew. <laughs> but before this, there was no internet. Right. Before, so this is a huge benefit. I used to talk to rural uh, listeners on the radio show all the time, bemoaning the fact that they'd have to use satellite internet uh, or there was no internet at all. Now that they have LTE and in a lot of rural areas that didn't have it, um, that's a huge boon. Yeah, and if you can afford a computer, then you can attach a computer to this and you have internet access. Uh, if you can't afford a computer, hey, at least you have right. something that can do an awful lot. Yes, but that's not the whole story, I think they're saying. And the other thing about this is you run up against data caps and then you end up having to pay more than you thought you were going to pay. Well, and that's you a know, shame. It's part in your budget. We've like have really got to fix that. Yeah. I, I think that's a big issue. Right, because yeah, you could say, oh, Tether, but then all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I got a you know $300 bill. I don't know how to pay that. I can't afford that. It's frustrating. My cable provider probably in response to this threat from LTE, has really upped the speed of their cable. I think it's now almost 200 megabits download. Still kind of slow upload, only 5 megabits or 10 megabits uh, upload. But that's a lot. Of, that's, you know, when you compare it to the download speed of even the fastest LTE, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. But they also, this is really frustrating, they have a cap, uh, a 350 gigabyte a month cap that's very easy, to, especially at those speeds, mm -hmm. to run up against. And so I feel like uh, while they're giving on the one hand, they're sneakily, because yes. you don't really, you're not aware of the cap till you hit it, taking away with the other, and that's right. not good. We really have to fix our internet uh, in the U.S. We, I think that the internet providers in the U U.S. are not doing the right thing, and no. I think it's up to the FCC to make them do the right thing. I agree. So today we're going to answer your questions. We got a lot of questions, Ooh, I'm so excited. and uh, the first one came from Heath in Honolulu. 
He said, I read today that Evernote is officially killing Skitch in January. I feel like the they actually killed it some time ago since it's so buggy. Uh, he, Heath says, I work as an inspector, construction, building, etc., and I need a photo annotation app that allows for boxes, arrows, mm. and text as Skitch does. It needs to be more professional. Most of the time, I find most of the apps I find are playful. Yes, I use Skitch to quickly point out construction issues while in the field and append those annotated photos to outlet database programs using the photo library. Skitch worked well for me, but now no hope they will fix the crashing bug. So that's a good thing to point out. You can still use Skitch. But, but it may have bugs. Not, yes. So uh, they kept Skitch around on uh, one platform. I, I, I forget. Is it is it Android? I can't remember one platform. But I, th I think there's a larger concern that Evernote itself mm -hmm. is really struggling. You know, Phil Libin, the the beloved CEO of Evernote, left, uh, and I get the sense that they're in financial straits because they're killing all the uh, peripheral apps that they acquired. They acquired Skitch, uh, or made themselves like Food and Hello. And they're all going away. Now, their response is, we're incorporating the, the, the annotation features of Skitch into Evernote. Mm -hmm. So if you're not already using Evernote, and I suspect you are, you wouldn't be using Skitch, but if you're not already using Evernote, download Evernote and see if its annotation capabilities uh, will live up to what you want to do. If not, there are other choices. Mm -hmm. what, what, well, now, but I agree with him. They tend to be not professional choices. So one I saw is called Folio and it's free. So um, I have that I like here that. on my desk. I annotated this picture right here. So it does my arrows. Own. So yeah, so. Because that's one of the things Skitch does. You say, you know, you're pointing to the dry rot. Mm -hmm. He's a contractor and saying, here's, and, you, know, you know, I could here's something to pay point, attention to. Point. That guy is suffering from dry rot. <laughs> Yeah. Leo. Yeah. Yep. And um, you can make that bigger text too. I right? can. Yeah. Yes, I can make it bigger. Um, and I can do boxes this. like this. Here's, is, is it um, ad supported or is nope. it in app purchases? Or I guess it's, just I, it away. I, it's free for now. It's I suspect a now. lot of programs are trying to capitalize mm -hmm. on the loss of Skitch to get into uh, people's attention. So that's good. Take advantage of that. Yeah. So, Folio, um, I, what would be the in app purchases if it were? An in -app purchase. Well, you know, uh, I don't know, different different uh, templates perhaps. You know what I'd love to see, and Skitch never did this either, I'd love to see kind of more omnigraphal style uh, objects so that you could do flow charts, mm -hmm. uh, you could do uh, electronics. Um, this looks pretty good, yeah. I gotta say. And it, and it works with uh, all the, the cloud storage solutions. Mm -hmm. And you can share pretty easily. Folio. Now I'm Folia. looking. Folia, I don't, sorry. Oh, Folia. 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 With an A. Folia. Folia. Interesting. Yeah. A branch fire product. Do you know anything about branch fire? No, but uh, that's good. Annotate and share. This looks like a great. I'm going to install this right now. It does have in app purchases, I see. Let's see what the uh, in app purchases are. Sometimes it's a good idea to check those before mm -hmm. you buy. Um, in app purchases. Folia starter, a buck ninety nine. So probably. You know, you'd get more. I don't know what you'd get. We'll have to. I'll have to open it and either. see. Yeah. What What do you get? You could sign up with Google. I'm going to do that because uh, it, oh, but it wants my Google account, so I'm not going to do that. Usually, it's easier to do that. But yeah, uh, that's good because if you can sign up to stuff, that means uh, uh, it'll preserve it across platforms. So I presume you can use it with an iPhone and an iPad, mm -hmm. and your account will. Yes, it's. I that's have what it Skitch on my, did so well. It is on my iPhone as well. And this one allows collaboration. You know, this might be better than Skitch. Maybe they're just taking all your personal information. Maybe that's how they're making money. I'm just no, I think, I, it's probably in -app, I think it's in-app in -app purchases. purchases. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's, that's not bad at all. Fully, I'm going yeah. to download that right now. I was going to show uh, a couple of uh, choices. Okay. Uh, oh, and, that's, and I like it. Android 2. Yes. Because I, unlike probably most people who watch this show, I'm, I'm a kind of cross-platform guy. Mm -hmm. I use Macs and Windows, iOS and Android. And I always look for apps that go across the board. That's one of the reasons why I like Simple Note. This was acquired by Automatic. That's the company that owns WordPress.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and normally I would say that's a good thing, but isn't that what went wrong with Skitch? Evernote acquired them and killed them. So, <laughs> but I feel like Automatic is committed to this. Simple Note is really all about uh, simple note taking. Um, and, uh, you know, you can, you can, it's very, it's probably really simple. It's cross-platform, which I kind of like. You can even use it on a web browser. 
But um, I don't know if you have annotation uh, capabilities. That's what he really wants. He likes to draw on it, right? Yeah, he wants to just put, yeah. like have a map and uh, put this an is, arrow on it really a, quickly. This is really text only. Mm. For that, you have notability, right? Yes, I have notability. I've been using that. I Let's really like that with the iPad. In fact, the iPad Pro made me go back and use notability more because this is kind of a natural one for Notability. Her. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I haven't used this a ton, but you're familiar with this, so I just... Um, create it a allows you to make a, a notes, and then within the note, you can do uh, text, but you can also draw. You can also, and I really like this, record. So notability probably isn't what our contractor wants, but if you're a student and you like to take notes during a lecture, you can record the lecture, mm -hmm. type notes as you go, and the recording will be attached to the notes in such a way that when, if, you t if you click on the text that you wrote, it'll jump to that part of the lecture. Man, I wish I'd had that in college. Wouldn't oh, that be yeah. great? You record a lecture, you take your notes, but you want to kind of elaborate on it, you hit that part of the notes, and you can hear that part of the lecture again. Phenomenal. That's it does cool. also have complete drawing uh, capability. So you, you could use this with, like, screenshots. I think that's how I was using Sketch, too. So it's like I've, you know, I want to point yeah. out that. I want to erase that. I this wanna... also has the advantage of, like uh, Simple Note and Sketch 2 synchronizing, and uh, with other so other platforms, you can synchronize only with a Mac, but that you can synchronize with your desktop. Um, and it's also pretty because, uh, it, and I think this is their uh, uh, their um, monetization strategy. You can buy themes for it. Mm. So you see, I bought the winter theme, ninety nine oh. cents. But it's just it's kind of kind of fun. Um, I I kind of like this one. Auto back up to your account. You can use iCloud if you wish as well. There uh, are existing a variety of themes, but you can buy more themes um, uh, on the store. And, uh, you know, you see there's quite a bit of, you know, change the font. It will do handwriting, which I, and I, you know, as I turn on left-handed mode and palm detection, because uh, this, to me, this would be a really good use for uh, students or anybody taking notes in meetings, that kind of thing. Um, so, and it does do web clipping as well, which is a good feature of uh, Skitch. Mm -hmm. I will miss Skitch. I use Skitch all the time. Skitch, I will miss On the you. Mac, there are some uh, good kind of Skitch-alikes. Um, Skitch uh, Acorn is a good one. I use that a lot. That uh, is an inexpensive. It's actually much more full-featured than Skitch. But uh, I use that for a long time uh, as part of my blogging. You know, one of the reasons people use Skitch is, is to get a screenshot or get an image, annotate it, reduce it in size, modify it, and put it in their blog. Acorn is very good for that on the Macintosh, too. You can also use Paper 53, Paper 53 I love for paper, annotating. But too. I think that, like like our uh, viewer wrote, it's more uh, playful is not the right word, but it's more artistic. Yeah. And uh, if you know, I think, I, but I, I think I, I really like uh, Folia. I think you found a really good right. look. You paper. put a bit. I did. I did. This is my husband watching um, Empire Strikes Back. But see, you had to Christmas make party. that arrow, right? I had to make. Yeah, I had to make that arrow. And that's the nice thing about Folia and Skitch. They had built-in arrows. But who's doing all that great drawing on your? Uh, Oh, the drawing? Let's oh, take this, a look at that. What Why program don't we? is this? 53 paper? This is paper, and I gave your, which I'm now calling my pencil. Yeah, I'm going to give that to you. <laughs> uh, to Greg Burnett, and he drew this. Boy, he's um, a good artist. Yeah, he uh, is amazing. And he, you know, first he drew with his finger. Um, let's see, that's mm, here. Yeah, he was drawing this with his finger. But that's a still pretty good. That looks just like you. Out. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, this is not me, but yeah, he drew all this. Nice. It's pretty amazing. It's glad we I mean, have one pretty, artist in our in the family. One, one in the midst, yes, <laughs> in the Twit family, uh, who deserves all the recognition that he should get because he is quite You're talented. Really talented. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and this was yeah, and you know one thing he um, he he used this for about five hours. He was also watching the front front desk at the same time, but it you know it it didn't it. The charge lasts a really long time on the pencil and the... And if it doesn't, you know, if it runs out, it's very quick to charge. Yes, just a few minutes exactly. To charge mm -hmm. So, um, as I mentioned, I got my... I, my mom could have used this, and that's what's nice about that is it's free. Mm -hmm. Paper by 53. Um, she uses brushes, which was when the iPhone first came out, pretty early on, or the iPad first came out, pretty early on, the artistic choice. Um, you know, there were covers, magazine covers done with brushes. She says, I use brushes because David Hockney, the famous British artist, uses brushes, so I'm gonna use it. I said, Mom, you know, because you have an iPad Pro, her Christmas gift, you should get something made for the iPad Pro. Would you do me a favor and try Procreate? And for drawing, I think, I doubt for annotation, but for drawing, there's nothing better than Procreate. She fell in love. Did I mention that? You did. I'm wondering why she already got her holiday gift. Uh, it came. And I, it was sitting under a tree, and I said, Mom, just open it. 
Do you need to borrow my pencil? No. <laughs> Alas, nothing will help. I'm not an artist. But uh, this is this is procreate and really a beautiful program. And you know, what I do is I show the uh, defacements that I make to yeah. <laughs> other people's that's art. That's your that's skill. About, that's about all that's, yeah. I can do. So, uh, um, so we talked about maybe just general Evernote uh, replacements also, just in case Evernote uh, goes away. And I think Google, Google Keep. I know I'm a big... Love Keep. And now big, that it's out for iOS, yes. I'm really pleased. And, yeah, and for the iPad Pro, it's great. Um, let me find it has this. some annotation capabilities. It does have some, yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's see it if It has I the can advantage of having... This. Synchronizing with uh, Google and preserving... Um, uh, your stuff uh, through Google, and it's completely cross-platform, which is nice. I thought I could annotate this picture of Carly and I at Star Wars, but I'm not exactly sure how. Well, I've done some drawing on mm. uh, on my Google Keep. So if you look here, there is a little palette that lets you choose colors. Oh, I thought that was the color of the note. And uh, <laughs> there must be somewhere where I've decided to draw, and I don't know. Uh, you're right. It's not immediately obvious. We're, we're being dumb, aren't we? Is this not? That's okay. Take photo, choose image. So, okay, you know what? This might actually, let me take a photo here. I'm going to take a photo of you and annotate it. This might be a really uh, useful tool. That's a cute photo. Mm. So I'm going to use that photo. So we make a, a note. And see, you can place it in a note, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool. Um, you could do text, obviously, text notes by typing. Shut up. Uh, and um, where do I find, maybe if I push the down arrow, no, that's not it. Boy, I feel like an, a dummy here. This allows me to pick different colors. Oh, that's just the background color. Uh, I can add it at a label or add it to some existing labels. Um, golly. Yeah, I haven't figured out how to annotate, but I mean, except There's for below, be a way. like you can put notes below. Like I had this gift idea I here. I did that. How yeah. did I do that? Maybe I, I did it on know. some other maybe, device. And then you, maybe you import it because you can. Your notes in Google Keep, you can now import to Google Docs pretty easily. So yeah, here are the here's the thing from um, these are the new credit cards I'm going to get. There's no personal information here, but I just took a picture of my consumer reports and I put it here. I think that's like very handy. Notes. Yeah, because I wanted to, this was from a magazine and I just put and it the, in there. And so. the, now the problem is you're looking for something to replace Evernote because Evernote may or may not go under. Mm -hmm. um, and here's the things you're looking for. One, something is not going to go away. Now, admittedly, Google's here to stay, but we've seen them kill other projects before. I feel like Keep is probably not going to be killed and one hopes will be maintained. It's a really useful tool. Mm -hmm. The fact that they put it on iOS only recently tells me that at least it's under development. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, you're looking for something that you can easily get your Evernote notes into, and that's a little bit more challenging. Evernote will export your notes uh, as RTF files, uh, uh, rich text format files, and uh, I'm not sure uh, Google, what... Google Keep, you can uh, export into Google Docs or Google Sheets. Can you import, though? Oh, import. Because um, you want a way to get your Evernote oh, stuff from Evernote into, too. and I haven't oh, tried doing yeah, that. That's interesting. I don't know. I that. don't see an import function, so mm. maybe there's. Maybe, but again, I I feel like I'm now baffled because I know I draw I drew on a note. This is my note. That's the title. This feels a lot like Evernote for anybody who used Evernote. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I guess maybe I did it on, this is the thing, it's cross-platform, it's very possible I did it on Android, and, and that they Android, haven't added this yeah, feature yet really to uh, possible, iOS. Yeah. I think that's, Take a photo, that's choose an image, guess. delete, make a copy, send, show checkboxes is kind of nice, because then you can uh, have a, a shopping list. Mm -hmm. I use this for shopping lists. I and, I share, and you can share it. That's one thing that's really nice yeah. that Evernote did also, you can share it. But, you know, Evernote does so many things, things like when you take a picture, it will automatically kind of decipher the text in the picture and add that to the note. Those things are very valuable. That, that's an Evernote Pro feature, premium feature. But mm. uh, I, I hope that doesn't go away. I hope it doesn't go away either. It's a little scary. All right, let's answer More questions. another question. We should mention, did we mention this is a question and answer episode? We did mention that, yeah. Okay. We're answering all your questions. Everyone, okay. not everyone. But uh, Anita from Atlanta asks, she says, thanks for all your hard work. Uh, have you heard about this? A friend called me yesterday in a panic because she got a pop-up on her iPad, attached is a screenshot oh, like that she screens, sent me. Uh, I've got the screenshot here. Since Apple doesn't seem welcoming to any antivirus scamming programs, that's not true. They, there are scanning programs. See, I, makes them. Okay, so we just don't recommend them, and I don't think it's a virus. I think what's happening, but I'd like to see it, is she's browsing to a website that has pop-ups. 
I think so too. And uh, you know, this is the nature of the uh, web is it's possible to using traditional web technologies, JavaScript and HTML, sometimes Flash and other mm -hmm. less appreciated technologies, pop stuff up. Now, fortunately, we don't have to worry about Flash so on So I have the screenshot up on my, yeah, yeah there it is. Just ignore that. That's a pop-up window in a browser. Mm -hmm. And uh, the problem is, you know, what you probably should make sure is that pop-ups are disabled in Safari. They are normally, um, and so that would be my only concern. But this is not a virus. A... The virus they're talking about is not on your machine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> B, in a way, this is a virus itself in the sense that it's doing something your machine you didn't want. There is no virus. This itself is the malware, but it's not invading your machine. So they want you to call this number. Do not call that number. Do not call the number. And then, because if you call the number, that's when they're going to use the social engineering to convince you to right. give them There's access. two things they'll do. They might just, and most likely, they'll just get your credit card mm -hmm. and say, oh, we can remove that. But worse, they might ask for remote access. Mm -hmm. If they do that, now you really want to hang up because you don't want to give anybody remote access to your machine unless you totally, 100%, totally trust them. Right. So, but, the, you know, giving them your credit card wouldn't be good either. Right. So, so don't click it. Don't call pop the number. That's a pop-up, I'm sure, on Safari. I don't think you're seeing that from something else. I don't think so either. Because uh, there are no viruses on iOS. There really aren't. Yeah. And there's nothing to worry about. So avoid the site where they got, they, she yeah. got it if she can. Well, he's, the part of it is that bad guys, one of the things they do is they look for sites that have vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. And then they install, inject malware, often hundreds of malware apps, onto that site. So that when you surf there, the apps go to work using JavaScript saying, well, what are the vulnerabilities? Oh, it's an iPad. That's how they knew it was an iPad. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's an iPad. Well, we can do this much. And they pop that up. Right. Uh, so it may not even be the site. It may, it may be the site itself has been hacked. Um, in any event, that's I absolutely certain nothing to worry about. Right. All right, uh, Sven is looking for a vector drawing app for the iPad Pro. Sven also drew a picture of us uh, on Twitter. Oh, there nice. Like, Isn't that good? I look like I'm angry. Uh, and you look like uh, you're happy, and I'm I'm obviously a Batman fan. Yeah, let's but, let's see if yeah, we can just match that go. up. Yeah, there we go. I mean, I'll get up. Let me get my mug. <laughs> oh, wrong hand. He's he was good. This guy's he is good. good. Yeah, there we go. Oh, are we moving? Or are you moving? Okay, there we go. Thank you, Sven. You know, Sven. he probably did a screenshot, because I think that's pretty accurate. I mean, he even knew I was left-handed. Yeah. That's yeah, good. I think he did a screenshot. Uh, there, he had two. Nice. One is when I'm, I have my eyes closed. For so that, he I gets think a he free question. Uh, so he's looking for a vector drawing app um, for the oh. iPad Pro. And, and you came up with a whole bunch of them. But I remembered that, um, I think it was Andy Anako, maybe it was Renee Ritchie, recommended one. Well, I, either way, I think Andy recommended it, and Renee said, yeah, this is great. It's from Adobe. Oh, so, uh, do you want to show them your, the various things you found, or do you uh, want to just go straight to graphite? Well, I uh, I have shown you make now, but I'm not sure is this oh, what they're talking this is, about. Now we've had these guys on Twit. They came by the studio. Oh. This is the program that was demonstrated at the iPad Pro announcement. Mm -hmm. And remember, they designed a, a car that was 3D printed, and that car actually was made. And they designed it in you make. Now you make's problem is, and you see it right there is it's ex it would be an expensive program. This is a 3D design mm -hmm. program, far more than a vector graphic program. I mean, I guess you could use it that way, but it's a 3D design program, very sophisticated. They're going to have to, you know, they want to make some money on it. So what they do is they give you a demo version and they pop up, as you uh, saw, they pop yeah. up that reminder that mm -hmm. for full uh, benefits, you've got to pay for it. What, did, do you remember what it cost? Because I... I think it can. I think it probably is a hundred bucks, but uh, I'm, but I'm not sure. I don't remember, nor do I obviously. But know this how to is use it. this is the three D design program. There's no question about that. Let me just check check the in app purchases on here and all. Yeah, here's I'll tell you. here's what I drew. Yeah, it's hundred fifty um, bucks. Yeah, here's what I drew yesterday. There you go. Um, just kidding. I did not draw that. That was in there. But I can. No, this I is can a, mess it up. But that's not <laughs> technically. That's not a. It's using is, vectors, but it's, but not, it's not, not a, a vector, vector. Okay. drawing program. What right. he's looking for is something like Adobe Illustrator. Right. Um, and, but that's not on the iPad yet. And one of the right. reasons you want a vector design program is, you know, mostly when Procreate and the tools we've just been showing, they're working with uh, dots on the screen. It's called bitmaps. And those don't scale very well. You blow that up, uh, it's, it's gonna, you're going to see jaggies, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're just, all the instructions you're giving the machine is color these dots that color, and that's the size of the dots when you make the dots bigger. Jaggy. So uh, people who are designing graphics for the web 
uh, and who want to make lightweight graphics do something called vector designing, which is instead of filling in dots on the screen, they draw curves, fill in the curves with color, and that can be that can be uh, uh, stored mathematically as a as a mathematical formula for the curve, and then the fill a color information and say this is fill. So it's very compact and it scales infinitely up and down because you, the curve can be drawn at any size and it will be perfectly smooth at all sizes. So vector graphics are a very popular way to make small, highly scalable, you know, small in download size, highly scalable graphics uh, for a whole lot of things. And so it's a, they're, they're really great. So graphic was the one that you recommended. This, this is the tool that Adobe created. It wasn't me. It, this came from Andy and Akko, uh, but, What uh, should we do? Should we way do beyond my skills. Go ahead and pick a blank one. Um, because what we're going to show you is the, the curve drawing. And this, so this comes from Autodesk, which does AutoCAD. Uh, these guys are brilliant. Now notice the tools, you're going to pick mm -hmm. a line. The tools, you, in effect, what's going to happen is you're going to get a, what's called a, a Bezier curve with handles. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. uh, draw a curved line now. Uh, actually, that'd probably be a better one. You see the handles on it. You see the curve? Oh, you see how it's doing yes. that? So it's essentially describing a curve. Now, you can put handles on that curve, and you can move it around. Oh, yeah. And it can, you can get it to do anything you can do with a bitmap drawing, but it's a different skill. And so I find it challenging. A lot of people do. But once you understand Bezier curves, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not so hard to do. And it has these huge advantages. So this is kind of mind-boggling, because this is only, what, six bucks, seven bucks? It was $3 on the iPhone, and $9 on the iPad, and $25 yeah. on the Mac. You can still do, by the way, notice that looks like a bitmap, but as soon as you stop, mm -hmm. it kind of smooths out and handles appear, because that even is a curve or a set, of, a series of curves. See the handles? So you can really see that this is actually a mm -hmm. vector. Even something that looks like a bitmap is a vector. Whoa. Fantastic tool. The fact that graphic is seven dollars for something that is as good as adobe illustrator which is hundreds of dollars uh, actually it's 8.99 you said so nine dollars yeah. so is mind-boggling this is for an ipad pro everything you're looking for it works on all ipads but uh, on the ipad pro this is the kind of apps i've been saying we need for the ipad pro to really succeed is professional grade apps the thing that blows me away is uh, that they're only charging so, so little. This is actually, yeah. I thought it was, did it say Autodesk? It says Indio. Am I looking at the wrong Hmm. This was, program? no, I think it was from, it did say it was Autodesk. Yeah, maybe Indio is a uh, division of Autodesk. Hmm. I, I don't know. So uh, here I made this ink blot for you. What do you see in it? <laughs> it says Autodesk Graphic. But it's, but it's from India. And you can find out more at graphic.com. Yeah. And it is available not just for the iPad, but for the Mac and the iPhone. This is this kind of is amazing that it exists. This was iDraw. It was around for a long time. Oh, this was I. Because iDraw was recommended when I was Oh, yeah, iDraw is yeah. great. But this is this is its replacement. OK. And as good as it gets, um, I, almost, I almost think that Adobe's got to be you know, shivering. It's, Adobe had some vector capabilities in the, uh, here's all the Adobe apps. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember which one. Yeah, it was Adobe Draw. This is also a, it's an Illustrator program, so it Im imports and exports to Illustrator. It does a lot of the same things, but of the two, and I'm, again, I'm not the guy to ask because I've never been able to figure out how Bezier curves work, but of the two, um, I think graphic is pretty amazing. This Although, you have to say, you can really do some amazing stuff. Yeah. This is Adobe Draw. Adobe is also really stepping up to the plate, I think, with the iPad Pro. These are great. This so, is drawings by um, some guy. And what about Procreate? That's not a vector and, drawing Antoine program. Antoine Demet. Say again? Procreate's not a vector drawing. That's a bitmap. Bitmap. Got it. So that's the difference. Uh, filling in dots with color. It's much more natural way. It's exactly how you paint on a, on a piece of paper. You don't make vectors. Mm -hmm. But when it, came to, when it became computer illustration, this is... This is how computer illustration really sings. Because these are all very small files, mm -hmm. despite looking like a, a bitmap. Tiny. But it takes a little more skill than, uh, than I've got to, to do it. So after the break, we're going to have some more questions. Uh, we love to hear your questions. You can call us, 757-504-IPAD. That's 4723. So 757-504. 4723. You can email us, iOS today at twit.tv or Megan at twit.tv. Uh, we love to hear from you. And yeah, send us a video too because we love to show those. And 
This is our last show of the year. The last show of the fall. Winter starts in just a few hours. Mm -hmm. It kind of feels like it right now. It's a little gloomy and rainy. And we wet. have an episode next Monday that we did. We oh, already recorded. We've already done it. Oh, and thank it's God. Awesome. You scared me. <laughs> most of the shows uh, are taking the week off after Christmas, as we always do, and most of them are doing best ofs. But we thought it'd be fun to kind of do a kind of a holiday, yeah. post holiday special. Right. Yeah, we wore our pajamas, so it's casual. That's good. Wear yours too while you're yeah. watching. And we showed you how to set up all the different new things you, we hope, got for the holiday season for mm -hmm. Hanukkah for Christmas. Uh, including an iPad and an Apple Watch. Right, and if they got a new one, what should they do with their old one? That's a great question. I wish I knew. Oh, gazelle.com. That's what they should do. I Gazelle's a great place. In fact, this is the perfect time of year to go to gazelle.com because, of course, you have old devices now that you want to recycle. Don't throw them in a drawer. You wouldn't throw a $100 bill in a drawer. There's, there's good money in those old gadgets, your old iPad or iPhone. Even if it's broken, it has is worth something at gazelle.com. You can get a quote right now. The quote's good for 30 days, so you have well into next year to decide what you're going to do to get the new device, to get it set up, to copy stuff over. I always recommend if you get a new iPhone or iPad or a new computer or whatever, keeping the old one around for a little while just to make sure you got everything you want on the new one. But then after 30 days, you can pull the trigger. They'll send you a box. They pay the shipping. If you forget to wipe your data, you should always wipe your data before you sell old devices. But if you forget to, they'll do it for you, which is awfully nice. And then they'll send you uh, a check, a PayPal credit, or an Amazon gift card. You see that for 295 bucks for that Apple device. Wow, for a 6 Plus. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, in case you got the success this uh, holiday season. Um, now, here's the other thing. It's a great time to go to Gazelle to buy as well because, yes, there's a flood of new products at gazelle.com, and the very best stuff is available for sale. They sell iPhone 4S through 6 Plus. They sell iPads, standard Air, and mini models, and even a variety of Samsung Galaxy phones. Every one of these devices has gone through a rigorous 30-point inspection to make sure that everything not only works but is cosmetically okay, no scratch, no big scratches on the screen, that kind of thing. They also have a 30-day return policy, so there's never any risk. And you know what else there's never any of? Carrier contracts. So you're not extending your contract at all, although it will work on your carriers. They have devices for AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint. Uh, it, this is a great way to get a new device, a replacement device, a device for a kid, Gazelle. You just got to remember that name. You've got stuff to sell. You've got stuff you want to buy. Go to Gazelle first. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot -E com. Give new life to used electronics. Trade in for cash or buy certified pre-owned at Gazelle. And we thank them so much for their support of iOS today. Look at this incredible uh, illustration. This is Kaizo Go from Jakarta, Indonesia. Oh, what app? This is done on Adobe's Draw app oh. for the iPad. Is that not gorgeous? It is. Just shows you that sometimes people think vector drawing is going to be mechanical or robotic. Uh, not at all. With somebody who in, in in the right hands. But you can see because it's vector, you know, kind of the textures, uh, you know, are not exactly smooth. It definitely has a different feel. Mm -hmm. These are the stages. Uh, that she went through to uh, draw this amazing painting. That Just amazing. gorgeous. That's Kaizo Go from Jakarta. So uh, now we have some recommendations. We get questions. We also get, hey, you recommended this. I have something that I like even better. Good. Le Leanne from Hawaii, she says she loved our show about holiday gifts. She came across a great iPhone camera lens that would also make a great gift. It's called the Moment Lens. Ooh. She said there So we talked about the... Uh, a low clip. Holo clip, mm -hmm. which has been around for a long time. I haven't seen the Moment lens. So she says that uh, it's a little pricier. The quality is incomparable. I've tried a couple of lenses from other companies, including the Holo clip, also Photo Jojo. While yep. the Holo clip was good, I didn't like that I had to remove my phone case every time I wanted to use the lens. Uh -huh. I ended up not using it. Uh -huh. The Photo Jojo lenses were attached by a magnetic strip that you placed on your camera. They were okay, but felt kind of cheapy. Right. The Moment lenses lens are exceptional. The lenses are attached by screwing them into a strip Ooh. that you place over the iPhone uh -huh. lens. Very easy to oh, do. Very intrigued now. The lens have DSL, DLSR feel to them. DSLR. 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 Uh, check them out. Uh, it's not cheap. They do have cases, or you can get the strip. Uh, 99 99 so 100 bucks for the macro, tele, or wide. And you have to pick one of those 
uh, three. That's still for a good lens. A hundred bucks is a very affordable price. And I guess it goes right over your case because she was saying she didn't like having to take the case. Yeah, off. I guess you could put the magnetic strip on the case yeah. instead of. Uh, this is this is neat. This is uh, this looks pretty good. I should. I'll order one of these. What should I get? The telephoto, mm. the wide. I like. You know, I love having a macro lens on my iPhone because then you can get really close up pictures of things. Yes, just it's don't take a fun. close up picture of me. You know, my new uh, wallpaper is a is a iPhone picture of my new uh, film camera and I have to say I look at this and I go I don't know why I need any other camera the <laughs> iPhone is a, is an amazing uh, camera the detail the color the way it captures the light is phenomenal but now there's something about having the pictures that you have to savor you know it's like is yeah, it worth film it? you have to savor yeah. all right my daughter wanted a Polaroid for did Christmas. she, she that's gets, the, all that's all the kids now yeah instant photography's back yeah my my parents got her one the $99 snap but that wasn't the one she wanted there was oh. one a little cheaper that she wanted for some reason did I'm she, not sure is she gonna get it yeah, this year she's yeah she's like this isn't the one I want. I'm gonna return it and exchange it. Oh. We're, we're an open family oh, she, to that. She can return it and exchange yes. it. There you exchange go. It. That's yes. fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, we have a voicemail uh, from Roy from Arizona. Um, Hello, this is Roy from Arizona. Hello. Calling and um, thanking Megan and Leo for their show. Thank you. I just wanted to say that I am really enjoying my iPad Pro. Yeah. I'm a musician, ah. specifically a trumpet player, mm -hmm. and I use the app Fourscore for my music playing, and it works really outstanding. So keep up the great work, and, and thank you for your, for your show. Thank Just you for the call, and I always appreciate calls where people say who have a skill in an area will um, tell us about a program that is, because yeah, we're not musicians. Mm -hmm. Have so, you used this before? Uh, apparently I have. Because I, I didn't buy it, because it was like, I think it was $20 or something. Yeah, apparently, but you apparently I bought, bought it. Because it, <laughs> uh, it just said, yeah, you can download that. There are in-app purchases. Um, I must have shown this at another time. This is way beyond my uh, ken, my skill. Um, but if, uh, if, you know, you're, he's a professional musician, it looks like you can scan in uh, existing scores, which is phenomenal. Um, you can create set lists. So, uh, wow. I mean, what a great way, especially with the Pro. You're playing back. I did, yeah. So, so you can actually play back a score on this. Well, this is a video, a promotional video of what you can do with it. It's yeah. $9.99. It's not we, that expensive. Not what we can do with it. No. No. What? But I have two trumpet players at home, so, you know, I might try this if it's good for the trumpet. It's um, good for the what's good for the goose the piano, is good for the course, gander. Not the trumpet. Um, all right, so they have. Let me see. I'm a, should I open? Uh, I'm interested. I don't Maybe have anything in my library. And you were going to become a musician one day, and you downloaded this app. You know, strange things appear on my devices. I was mentioning that the Elf on the Shelf TV series just, just appeared. I got a bill for it. I don't know who bought it. But you don't, Maybe Lisa bought it. No, I asked her. Hmm. <laughs> Michael? No, he's too he's too old for Elf on the Shelf. I, I don't know where it came from, but uh, hey, I'm glad to have it. Let's was see. There's it also you. A, was it you? <laughs> Did you buy it? <coughs> Let me see. Uh, okay, so it has cloud support. This looks really great. I uh, again, we're the wrong people to ask, but I'm going to trust our trumpeter. Mm-hmm. Roy. Uh, Roy. I trust Roy. For F O R S C O R E. Four score. Four score. And... Lots Music of years reader ago. for iPad. Uh, so we got another recommendation, um, and now I can't find the person's name who recommended it, but I will <laughs> before I'm done. Uh, it's for a traditional headphone, Jams Transit. Fifty dollars, uh, or even less, are the greatest. Have you ever tried Jams Transit headphones? Jams, Jams. Transit. Loud, good bass, separate volume, and skip buttons. Comfortable for an hour or two. Sounds uh, good. They have a more expensive, bigger model for $80. That's which cool has, looking. Yeah. The jams. That's so if, like, if the kids are saying, I want my Beats, just paint a B on it. Right. Uh, and then you got the These jams. are nice because they're wireless, which I really like. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, if it sounds good, now you got to be very careful with wireless Bluetooth because there are two different Bluetooth profiles. There's mm -hmm. one for a wireless headset. The headset profile is not good for music. It's really designed for phone calls. And then there's A2DP, which is a stereo protocol. And if you want high quality music, that's when you play in your car, usually using A2DP. That's why it sounds okay. Otherwise, it works. 
So this is, uh, I'm sure, using A2DP, and uh, I love the idea of wireless, don't so you? So this is Mike from Texas recommending. Oh, and it also has hands-free calling, so it supports both profiles. Because I had recommended the Plantronics Fit um, on i5, and I also, the Backbeat uh, 903, I have those Bluetooth for running. Um, this is more, sounds there. like, for music as, yeah, so. as well as phone calls. But yeah, he said these. I might have to get those. They look great. Jams. Jams. So thank you, Mike from Texas. Kick out the... Mm -hmm. Let's kick out the jams. jams. Okay, now Patrick also has a recommendation. Here's a letter from Patrick uh, Delahanty, who uh, works here. I don't know if you'll be able to read it, but I'll read a little bit. He got this from AT&T. He said he, he has been an AT&T customer for a long time, and they are thanking him for his business, but they're going to add $5 a month. Yeah, he's not alone. Everybody! Getting an extra five bucks for your unlimited plan. Oh, unless you don't really feel like you need unlimited. Are they saying that too? Yeah, you can, yeah. You, know, you can just, you know, choose a different plan. So the, the, the president of AT&T last year very famously said the worst thing he ever did as president of AT&T was these unlimited plans that they offered when the iPhone first came out. They really regretted it. And they're stuck with them, right? They said, hey, forever, we'll give you unlimited. But they have come up with all sorts of schemes for getting getting you off the unlimited plan and you're going to get more this is everybody who's on the unlimited uh data plan will be getting this done this mm -hmm. no, no, another five dollars a month starting uh, next month uh and i you know there's nothing you can do about it that's that's their right to do and of course they're i i keep getting notices saying like see how much you'd save if you just went to the family plan mm -hmm. Uh, which is a limited plan, but it has, you know, they give you 20 gigabytes for less. And, and truth is, uh, when they do that, they often say, you didn't use that much That's last month, so what are you paying that yeah. for? You know, when they, I, I fell for this about maybe a two years ago, or yeah. a year, it was about two years ago, and they really say, like, you only used 99.99, I mean, 99 percent. You didn't use close to unlimited. But that was, like, right on the eve of everything streaming and wanting to tether and everything. It's right. like they really fooled me. Into. Also, I feel like you get distracted and you say things you don't mean. I gave up my unlimited plan and I will regret it. For the I rest think, of my though, life. people should be smart about this and really uh, not assume. I, I know people who like hold on with, like, for dear life to mm -hmm. their unlimited plan, and maybe that isn't the best deal really? for you. Well, maybe it's not. Maybe you did save money. Are you sure? I mean, I'm not sure. Because you, you, it's the kind of thing where you have to pay attention every month and can't figure out what the difference would be. And do you have overages on your AT&T plan? Well, I have Sprint. Okay, Sprint. And I uh, I did, but then, I, you know, what you have to do is then you have to be careful, like, especially with your podcast apps, make sure that you're not streaming, you know, that make sure that you're you're downloading instead of streaming. And, you know, you just have to be more careful. You have to make sure every time your children and their devices are inside, they're using Wi-Fi. Uh, make sure, you, I mean, there is Wi-Fi most places. I did, so it's not that bad, but I just, I feel like, I feel tricked, because I feel like they tricked me out of it right before I wanted to, you know, like, if I don't have... Uh, an LTE plan on this iPad. So if I'm going to use it in the car, I'm going to tether it to my iPhone. You know that that kind of thing. Like all the, all the reasons. I have to say, if to. the if the head of AT&T says he regrets it, it probably is a better deal for you. Than that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> this is in case you don't believe me. This was in 2012. AT&T chief regrets offering unlimited data for iPhone. Randall Stevenson <laughs> said it was the worst thing we ever done. And if if we hadn't, if we hadn't done it, we'd be able to get people to use more data to pay up. As opposed to having the light, yeah, this is their spin. The light data users subsidize the heavy data users. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think anybody watching this show, you're probably a heavy data user. Probably. So you should say thank you, light data users. So, so do you know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to download instead of stream right before I go on my long road trip? What? My audiobooks. <gasps> I am a huge fan. Same thing for me. We're going on a cruise next week. And that means a long flight. Uh, babies crying in the row behind me. I mm -hmm. always, always bring my in-ear headphones. I use Etymotics, although I just got a new pair that uh, uh, Jim Dalrymple recommended. Oh. And on the phone uh, or the iPad, I get Audible because I want to listen. And it's a, it's a great way to pass the time. And, you know, I started doing Audible when I had a very long commute from Tech TV back up here. Mm -hmm. You now know. I know, on your big giant. I, it was, I was in the car with you. I commuted with you. Oh, that's you right. Had we your listened big, to your big white. Together. You had your iPod that was about this size. <laughs> that's like, right. It was like that thick. Yeah. And I was like, what is that circle thing? How does that work? And remember. what books, do you remember what books uh, we listened to? The Glass to? Castle by Julia, or oh, Julia the Glass. great. The Julia, what something with Glass that? and Julia. 
Yeah, because I think you downloaded books you thought I might like. It I was did like, try. <laughs> I, I tried to buy books you would like. Um, um, but, but yeah, how many and, audio And Lisa and I then? now, did, by the way, here's the i. We still have the iPod. I think John's bringing it to me. Oh, this one, you remember that? Yeah. That's probably still so got cute. that whatever the Audible books were it on there. It took me an embarrassingly long time to figure out how this click wheel <laughs> the, the worked. click wheel. It just didn't make sense to me. I don't know. Audible, uh, they've come a long way now. They have an iPad app specifically for the iPad. Of course, iPhone, uh, Android. Uh, Windows Phone. It's really easy. You can even listen on a Chromebook or on the, just on the web. They've got you, you can listen in the browser now. But what what's really the key the the key to Audible is 180,000 audio titles, including not just books, but also speeches and performances. Oh, I've got to get a Caesar Sari's new oh, one, yeah. Modern Romance. And the thing that's fun is now sometimes you don't want the author. To read the book. Sometimes you do, and a cease would be great. You, mm -hmm. A comedian especially, you want them to read the book because they're going to bring that book to life. It's in their own voice, and so you really, you really want that. Uh, I am a, I am a longtime Audible user since 2000, since Megan and I used to commute from San Francisco, and I just love it. I buy books every month to listen to. In fact, I recently bought, uh, there's some French language courses, because Lisa and I are going to Paris in the fall. Mm. They have language courses. They have gr the great courses, the college courses. Uh, there's a great one, if you're already an Audible member, uh, Free History of Christmas Music by Robert Greenberg, the guy who did the amazing great courses on how to listen to classical music. Uh, science fiction. Carly Simon's got a new one. See, I, uh, man. This is the problem, though. Every time I go to audible.com, I find another book I want to listen to. Here's the deal. We're going to get you set up with the, the subscription. That's the most affordable way to use Audible. You can buy a la carte as well. Oh, the new Force Awakens. I started listening to that. Whoa! Don't listen till you've seen the movie, because I think there's spoilers. But uh, after, you listen, after you see the movie, you really, the new, it's The Force Awakens, and they really have done a nice job of, play a little bit of that, if you would, Anthony. They've done a dramatization. There's no spoilers in this. Okay. Staring, despite himself. And in response, the figure of Kylo Ren turned. All right, stop. Stop right now. Okay. <laughs> Don't you want to listen? That's great. I do. And the thing that's great about Audible, it's like a movie in your mind. The thing plays out. You're driving along the road, and it's so vivid. Sometimes I think I've already seen the movie, but I've just listened to the book. It's really great. Look, here's the deal. We're going to get you the gold account. That's a book a month subscription. Uh, you also get the Daily Digest of the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal. Great way to keep up on what's going on around the world. If you've got a commuter, you spend time on a treadmill or, you know, walking the dog, doing the dishes, sweeping the floor, whatever you do that you can't be holding a book, you've got Audible in your ears. I have it playing throughout the entire house through my Sonos. I love it. You will too. Free book because what you do when you sign up for the gold account is you get that first 30 days for free. You pick a book. You listen to that book. If you like it, of course, we hope you will. You'll subscribe. But if not, cancel in the first 30 days. You'll pay nothing. You get to keep the book, so you don't have to even finish the book. You, that book is yours forever. So pick well. Pick wisely, young Padawan. I think this, I think this Star Wars The Force Awakens would be a really good choice. Audible.com, and this is very important. You have to go to this address. Audible.com. Yeah, leave it up there. iOS today. Audible.com slash iOS today. And that's how you get your free book. Oh, now, I, now I know what I'm downloading for the cruise. For the trip, yeah. Uh, all right, so we got some more questions. Mm. Tom from Smyrna, Georgia says, I have a question yeah. regarding the Logitech Create keyboard for the iPad Pro That's that I know got. you have and yep. use as I do. What is the purpose of the lock button in the upper right corner? I accidentally hit it all the time when typing and it drives me nuts. Otherwise, I, I wish we could take Pro. that out. You do see. I think I have small hands, and you don't it's not. Hit it? No. So this is the lock button. I don't know if you can see my keyboard. Um, this. The camera. Yeah, there it is. This is the so lock. It's right button. above the back. And I can see why you hit it because it's right above the backspace, right? Yeah. When I'm. But I. I my. It's the delete button. Yeah. yeah. The, or backspace. <laughs> yes. That yeah. same thing. Do you use that to backspace? Because I do. I do. Okay. Yeah. I had to look because I was like, what is? Well, the lock. <laughs> first of all, what is it used for? It's used. It locks to lock. your iPad, so and that's why he's office, annoyed. You know, because you want to walk away. Here, there's a bunch of snoops that we work with. Everyone yeah. wants to yeah. read everything I got. Yeah. I'm just kidding. But yeah, it locks and then, you know, unlocks. So that uh, is what it does. And I have small hands, so it, 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 my pinky barely, fit. I don't I don't go all the way up there. But but I guess, did, was it a trouble for you? Because you don't, because there's not one on your keyboard. Well, and that's what's interesting. So the other keyboard you can get, by the way, they're all in short supply. The Logitech Create is now in short supply. Oh, really? This is the Apple uh, keyboard. 
And I, I got the Logitech Create, and I decided uh, not to. I gave it to my mom for her iPad, because it's too big and bulky. It's fine if you don't carry the iPad Pro around, but the nice thing about the Apple keyboard, even though it's 20 bucks more, it just, it's more compact. It's not protective in any way, but it's no. more compact. Yeah. Uh, and it works kind of the same way. It's got the little pogo pin. It doesn't have to be charged up or anything. It just like that. Um, but it's a much simpler keyboard. It doesn't have any specialized keys, really. In fact, it's even got the caps lock key. The only specialized key it has for an iPad is this one to switch the keyboards. And it definitely doesn't have a lock key. Now, what's interesting is Apple has keystroke combinations that will do many of the same things. Mm. You have to learn those. Um, I, you know, I mocked this keyboard, the Apple keyboard, because I thought that's 170 bucks. It's too expensive. It's fabric. It's chiclets. It doesn't have as much travel. This is the Logitech is much more like a real keyboard. That's why I bought it. I prefer the Apple keyboard because for all the typing I do, I don't do a lot of writing on this. Uh, for all the typing I do, and it has enough travel, I feel like it's a decent keyboard. What about, uh, have you heard of the Bridge Pro? The I have Bridge, Bridge Pro oh, is... I should point out, any any Bluetooth keyboard will work. Right. Well, the Bridge Pro is not out yet. It's a BRY Bridge, um, and Bridge. it comes out January 9th. Kevin Tofel and I talked about it on Tech News Today. He did a review of it. Did he uh, like it? He hasn't, he just, he didn't do a review. I'm sorry. He did an he article about that it's coming out. It exists. And, yeah. and I guess they have a lot of Bluetooth keyboards for other iPads. Right. So the, Br the Bridge Pro is something you might want to wait for too. There it is. Thank you, Anthony. Bridge Pro. And things if, just got interesting. See, it fits. See how it fits in there? Um, just, uh, and you can, the thing about that is you can, um, the, you can adjust the screen uh, angle. That's the thing you can't do with either of these. No, these are both so fixed. So if you want yeah. to, but it has the same. If you close it, it does. There's no coverage. But it's a, it's just a different idea, and it looks nice. But we haven't used it, and um, hmm. well, you should pre-order that so that we can test it. Hmm. Pre-orders start January fourth. Oh, that's just when I get the day I get back. We'll be doing a show that day. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's let's do it on the yes. air. So I, I do like one advantage that Logitech has: the keyboard keys light up. The Apple keyboard keys do not mm -hmm. light up, and it looks like that one does light up. Yeah. You can use, if you have any Bluetooth keyboard, including Apple's Bluetooth keyboard, you can use those. Uh, in fact, my, what my mom's doing right now is she bought a stand. The nice thing about a stand is you can have it raised up a little bit, it can angle, it can rotate, it can mm -hmm. do all sorts of things. These also don't do anything in, in uh, uh, portrait mode because... You yeah, know. you can't do anything. Yeah, <laughs> Your that keyboard is a pain. sideways now. Yeah, the Logitech is hard to get in and out. Yeah. That's, that's my complaint so, about it. So if you got a stand... Then you can rotate it, do anything you want, and then you can have a wireless Bluetooth keyboard, including Apple's, sitting here. So you really can do any keyboard you want. And mm -hmm. none of them will have that lock key. The only one that does, as far as I know, is the Logitech Create. Maybe that was a bad idea. I don't know. I, I, don't, don't, know. I never hit it either. Uh, yeah. So I don't, know, I don't know what to say. Maybe there's, he has giant hands. Is there a way, do you think there's a way to make it stop, like to deactivate it or whatever? To on know. a Mac, there would be. I, I don't think there's any access to that kind of yeah. low-level stuff on the iPad. Just cut off the tips of your fingers, and then you're, they <laughs> would be good. a little bit or, smaller. as Steve Jobs said, sharpen them. Yes. <laughs> All righty. Uh, so let's go to this question from Jeff. Jeff from Tamarack, Florida asks, Why hasn't Apple included the podcast app on the new Apple TV? Do you think it's going to eventually come back? I don't care because the Apple Podcast app's terrible. Yeah, I don't know um, why he's looking for that. I mean, you could AirPlay your, from your Apple. Actually, podcast. that'd be a good way to do it. Just use your iPhone or iPad mm -hmm. and use. In fact, my app cap is is my favorite podcast app that's coming up, uh, and then you can use that uh, to AirPlay. Right. Uh, mine if, actually, you can use Chromecast too to Chromecast to your TV if that's what you want to do. And if you want to watch Twit, we have four Apple yeah. TV apps. Four. One, at least have, one is free, too. I have not looked to see what podcast apps are out there, but uh, the Apple podcast app is not one that I'm waiting with bated breath for. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen which ones are out there That's either. That's an but interesting... Well, we'll have to look for podcast apps. Podcast apps yeah. Yeah. on the on Apple, Apple TV. TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More uh, questions. We have, okay. You said uh, a plethora? I have a plethora, yeah. Okay. What is the collective noun for questions? You know, it's a murder oh, of like crows. A mur yeah. Uh, you know, a passel of alligators. Mm. I think, by the way, now I'm starting to realize that collective nouns are made up by somebody with a sense of humor. That they're okay. that they're intentionally weird and funny. Yeah. So um, I, I don't know. I'm at a loss. I, I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> a collective noun for uh, yeah. Let, mm -hmm. let me see. Uh, I'm going to see uh, okay. here. 
Here's a list of collected collective nouns. Let's see on Wikipedia, right? Let's see if they like a group of hills. Uh, well, apparently, German uses a, a, a ge. That's that's not what I want. I want the the. This is this is a little too esoteric. A lot. Of yeah, questions. here we go. A quart of terms questions. Terms of venery are words of groups for animal. A quart of questions? It's That's like what chicken hands wood. Says. A quart. A quart. A quart of questions. Quart, like the, you know, he's alliter mm. alliteration. Mm. Call a cul de sac of questions. <laughs> um, cul de sac of questions? A query of questions? A quiver of a qu questions. A quiver of questions. A quiver of questions. There okay. we go. Okay, let's move on to the rest of the quiver. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John from Victoria, Australia asks, I have a question. When I'm home, I do my banking on my iMac, but when I travel, I'm using my iPad and iPhone. Yeah. Now, unless I'm missing something, how do I take a PDF, like a bill, from out of an email and save it in a file in iCloud? Oh. It appears that the option is not available in iOS, and strangely, I can save one to OneDrive or Google Drive, but not yeah. iCloud. Okay, and you asked me about this. Let me see I if did. I can find a, uh, a PDF is somewhere... Yeah, here is um, a document uh, from my uh, my Kaiser Permanente. This is a PDF file, and this is a little weird. If you view the PDF, um, you can send it to iBooks. All right. Um, now I don't think you can do it. No. See, this is where it always throws me. What you need to do is send it to Safari first. Oh, wait, there was an iBooks. There was there an iBooks? Did you see it? Oh, there it is. Copy to iBooks. Copy to iBooks, okay. In Safari, it's kind of weird because you have to pull it down and tap it and then it will appear. It's very confusing, but if you can, it, so, but you can always get it into iBooks. And when you get it into iBooks, of course, uh, that should sync, right, to uh, every, everything else, if you, I think. So I store my PDFs in iBooks and you can, uh, you can you can actually say instead of all books you can say just show me PDFs and then I'll have PDFs stored in iBooks. You know what? I, one of the things I have here is is camera manuals. Um, now I, the question is, do they sync or not? Maybe they don't. Hey, check your phone, Anthony says. Maybe they don't, uh, or maybe we have to set up iBooks to do that. How could you get them into iCloud? What would iCloud back up? It blacks. Uh, well, we, let's look in settings and we can see here. This, this, is an int this is a challenge. It is a challenge, but I mean, I, I am under the, you know, I use iCloud, but I also use Dropbox. And I also so, use Google Drive. Notes, Apple's Notes will synchronize. Um, I don't see iBook uh, on here. So uh, these are the things, photos, mail, contacts, calendars, reminders, Safari, notes. You, you could maybe put it in the Safari Reader, something like that. I don't know. Uh, let's look at iCloud Drive. See, these are the things that support iCloud Drive. Um, so you could open it up in one of these, like, like pages would work. Paper works. So anything, uh, Google Docs would work. So anything that you can save to one of these will be saved out to your, uh, if you explicitly tell it to, saved out to your iCloud Drive. You know, it blows me away that that does not work for iBooks. Uh, maybe Apple doesn't want you to use iBooks for that. Because they do allow you to store PDFs in there. Boy, it'd sort of be nice if they'd synchronize yeah. as well. That's I an think interesting that everyone question. should have more than one um, cloud backup service. Just yeah, in case. I mean, if you have Dropbox or others, th yeah. that's easy enough. Um, but that is weird. I find iCloud to be weird. It is my least favorite Apple or iOS thing. It's, it's not confusing. super it's, well implemented. It must have a reason. I mean, they're, I don't know. Um, they, I think they, 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 they struggle. They struggle. Honest. They struggle with right. the cloud. The struggle is real for iCloud. Yes. Uh, I have one more question, and uh, that is from well, Phyllis. Well, this was a quiver. Oh, yeah. One, one more question from our quiver. Uh, Phyllis from Howard Beach says uh, she has organized all her photos in Picasa. What do I do now? Picasa was Google's photo um, app that they bought, and now they have Google Photos, of course. Can I transfer to Google Photos in the same headings I have? Also, Windows 10 is telling me that something is not compatible, so I think it's Picasa and cannot yeah. upgrade from. So it sounds like uh, she uses Windows 10 um, and an iPhone or an iPad and wants to use Google Photos. Um, I think if you sync with a Mac, um, when I synced my Picasa, it did. Yeah, it did bring up the folders automatically if you do it that way. But I, I wasn't using Windows 10, so I don't know. 
But I do, I was a big fan of Picasso. I used it. And Google forever. Photos re was intended to replace Picasso Web, which is the online capability of Picasso. Mm -hmm. So if you'd been sharing the Picasso Web, uh, I would think that it would then uh, continue to. So maybe look in your Picasso settings mm -hmm. and see for a way to upload it to the web and then have it be uh, Picasso Photos. But That's I, interesting. Yeah, it is. I Google highly photos. recommend Google, Google Photos, though, yeah. too. So yeah. I'm sorry that Picasso left, but I think, that's what happens. I think while not all the features of Picasso are there, and in particular, she, she spent a lot of time organizing her photos mm -hmm. of Picasso, um, you will find that a lot of what Google Photos does obviates that. For instance, you made a big folder containing all your pictures from your trip to uh, Paris. Well, now you can literally go into search on Google Photos, type Paris, and all the photos that were taken in Paris will appear. So there's kind of some organizational stuff that happens automatically with right. Google Photos that doesn't require your effort. But I understand you put a lot of effort into those folders. Yeah. I, or, it's yeah. a shame to lose them. I mean, if you, it's same with dates, like every, right. all the pictures from 2005, you can find all You those. know what I've been using a lot? They just introduced photo sharing in Google, yes. folder sharing mm -hmm. in uh, Google so Photos. You can so uh, I took all the photos I took of Lisa and I shared them with Lisa. Mm. Uh, all the photos we took on a trip, our last trip, I shared them with Lisa. So that's really nice. And what's nice is you can share it in such a way that people can add their own photos. So we can now make a, a, a mutual photo folder mm -hmm. that has her pics and my pics from our trip. That's something really great. I love that. That's a, another reason to use Google Photos. It's really very focused on cloud. So I wonder if I need to update to do that. So here's my uh, this screenshot that I um, took because I needed to bring my Princess Leia wig to you. And Siri on the Apple Watch thought I meant Kristen wig. wig That's weird that, that they would prefer a proper name to an, a noun, a common noun. Right, but also um, spelled Leia wig. Princess Leia. Spelled that. I got Princess from, Leia right. Yeah. So where, is that where I share? Right here? Add to an album or do I need to update? No, see down here? That's So a group. Oh, shared album, is that where? Uh, can, well, no, you'd have to do it in Google Photos. I wasn't talking about Apple. This is Google Photos. Oh, you're in Google Photos yeah. right now. Okay. Uh, put it, press the plus button up in the upper right-hand corner, and you're going to see a choice of album, oh. shared album, movie okay. story. So create a new shared album. Okay. And if you've selected photos already, it'll take the existing photos, but now you can share those photos. I'm covering a picture that Greg... Um, Drew that isn't appropriate or family friendly, but you know. It's not unfriendly. Is that you? No, it's not me. It was just someone giving an. Uh, oh, a little. Yeah, that's little all. Hand it's nothing, nothing that bad. Man, if you just, want family friendly, look at my pictures. No, thank unfriendly. you. Actually, that is friendly. <laughs> yeah. That's how you make families. Oh, Leo, this has been wonderful. Um, Time for a break. <laughs> it is. Leo.com. Let's talk about that. Our show today brought to you by The Way to expand your mind with the great courses in many areas of technology, business. Uh, the nice thing about Linda is it's a natural fit for you because you watch our shows because you are a curious person. You want to learn. You want to expand what you know. Maybe you want to get better for, uh, for something uh, at work. Maybe you want to get better at your hobby. Lynda.com is about all of that. These are not your grandfather's YouTube videos, if Grandpa didn't have YouTube videos. But they're not your, these are not, these are not amateur hour. This is beautifully produced videos with teachers who work in the field, so they're really experts and are great teachers. This is a great place to find those courses, and a lot of them, more than 3,000 on-demand video courses. Maybe you want to take better photos. That's my hobby, right? Love to do it. Uh, Linda's latest courses uh, include, uh, oh, wait a minute, this is Apple stuff. Look at this, up and running with Apple TV. Oh. They're putting us out of business. <laughs> I love that one. That's Joseph Lenashki, the DIY photographer. But look at this, uh, app, up and running with Apple TV, up and running with the iPad Pro. What the what? Well, you know, <laughs> we can take the competition. They do such a good job. And you know, these you're seeing on the right the English language transcripts which make it very easy to not only follow along, but search into the videos and find the, the solution or the tip that you're looking for. They also have up and running with Office for iPads and iPhones. What's nice about Linda is they work with the companies, so they get these videos out fast. When the new Microsoft Office came out, they already had videos in, to train you. One of the other hobbies I have is writing software. I love coding, not for professional reasons. I just love learning a language. 
And if you want to learn how to code or maybe develop an iOS app, there are great courses, web design courses like Node.js Essential Trading and my favorite new language, Up and Running with Clojure. That's new. I've got to get that. Programming iOS 9 and the Gameplay Kit. Oh, there's even a course called Programming for Non-Programmers using iOS 9 and Swift. I love Linda. Here's the best part. One low monthly fee gives you access to everything. You don't have to pick a major. You don't have to say it's for work or for fun. It can be all of the above. All of the above. And with your monthly uh, uh, subscription, you also can download tutorials and watch them on the go, including access on there, your iOS device or your Android device. I want you to try it. We've got 10 days free for you. Lynda.com slash iOS today. 10 days free. I didn't know they had that closure course. I'm going to go there and do that tonight. L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash iOS today. We thank them so much for their support. 10 days of premium access. That's the best you can get, you know. The best. The best. Time for hats because it's app cap time. App and of course, it's cap. the holiday season. So I'm wearing my Pope Santa hat. <laughs> Actually, this is not a Pope hat. People think it is a mitre, a bishop's mitre, something like that. This is a, uh, a folk hat from uh, Ukraine, I believe. Oh. Isn't it? You don't sure. know? Sure. I don't know. Yes, it is. Yours is a folk hat from the streets of the city. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> from the urban, urban city. Or Mrs. Claus. Or Mrs. Claus. Or, yeah, yes. that's what Mrs. Claus would wear. It's she, nice. Yes, it's she would. trimmed. It's great. Uh, so we wear is, these, why? We, this is, so you can, you know, semi-insult me and I can laugh. I didn't insult you. <laughs> You didn't. I insulted I was, the hat. The hat. Right, not the, the wearer. Hat, the hat, yes. No, this was brought to us by, remember that la nice lady who brought us some ethnic hats, I think from Ukraine? I'm not sure. Somewhere Slavic. Well, we wear hats uh, so that we can show you our favorite app, and we call it App Cap Oh, time. it's a, like it's an award for it's a, being a good app. Right, exactly. A good app, in in our opinion. The best of the week. Uh, and I said I, was, I used your word, infantilize, for coloring, because I, I like to color. It's the big thing now. now coloring books adult are coloring back. Books. Adult coloring right. books. Not adult pictures, just adults liking but to no, color. But, but, uh, but they are pictures that are hard. I mean, yeah. they're much harder than the kind of coloring books your your, your kids have. Mm -hmm. But what is so this? So this is called Pigment, and it's free, but then there are in-app purchases for the, Ooh, the library. It's like a mandala. So it is. Beautiful. These are mandalas, which are very... Oh, it's so My beautiful. Hat is getting Here, in the just way. fold up the edge. Okay. How's that? And it's jaunty so, and out of the way. Yeah, so uh, like col when I boots. color, I usually take it out of the keyboard. So I, I can, I have the option of all of these different colors Do you like, here. do this like while you're watching TV? Or yeah, just or just, or yeah, if yeah. I'm, so I could just color. It's, like, it's kind of like needlework. It is, it is, yeah. Is there a mode that it doesn't cross the line? Yes, there is. Thank you. you. can, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm terrible. Yeah, like there, see, um, yeah. I can also. Oh, and you can zoom. Oh, well, that yeah. makes it easier. So, yeah, oh, I that's tap good. it and then. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. There are different gradients of brushes also, so I You know I what, can... this looks like fun, because I have is. no artistic ability, but it, but you feel like you're kind of making art. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like, I have this pencil now that you gave to me instead of yeah. giving to your mom, which I will be eternally grateful for. Um, and uh, and now, now I feel like I can really use it, because I'm not, I can't nice. really draw if you've nice. seen. So, um, yeah, so let's, there are butterflies. Ooh. There's two volumes of mandalas. This is mandala Ooh. volume Mandalas one. are hard. Those are, uh, yeah. Winter. So, detailed. you know, I started. Oh, snowflakes. Yeah. And. Um, this is nice. It is oh, really nice. Oh, look at that. And, and there's absolutely no purpose or use, right? You, no, just, yeah. yeah and so you can, yeah, you can zoom Make or it a little rotate. harder. Draw it upside down. You can Actually, share them. You could I mean, share them. You can oh, share nice. them. Yeah. So, I mean, sure, there's no use per se, unless no, you want to see what a green reindeer looks like. So soothing. It is so soothing. Does that look green to you? I think this is... I must be blue-green color blanks. Um, but you could just practice your drawing. So, it's yeah, kind of bluish to me. It does? Yeah. It's, um, it's green and pink. And I always... Oh, thought... reindeer do have pink bellies. That's <laughs> really do. one of the things that's uh, so appealing. So, yeah, and then when you're done, um, you can share it uh, on Instagram. Is this... What is this called? It's called Pigment. And it's free? You're free, but then in-app purchases for the coloring now, books. Now, do they... Well, let me see what the in-apps are, because I'd love to kind of see... Well, this coloring book was... That was an in-app purchase? Yes. Okay, because it's um, for the holidays. I yeah. think uh, maybe one comes with it, uh, and then oh, everything the else you have to oh, buy. Oh, look, that's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Let me be you more specific. You must have specific. bought a pack. I bought a subscription. 
It's oh. a subscription. Yeah, because you'd run out after yes. you color it thousands is a, of It's a things. subscription, yeah. um, and I, nice. it's a, I think it's $9 a month or you know, something. You know, I'd love the, Do you know the Dover books? Do you know what those yes. are? Yes. I would love yeah. to be able to color those. Oh, look, she's a... Yeah, so... You know, monks make these mandalas out of sand. It's very, it's very meditative. Right. It is meditative. Yeah. So if you um, haven't gotten a gift for someone, this Pigment. is something you could get, and, you know, it, it would be shipping on time because it's just a subscription, so you don't you wouldn't have to go to a store or anything. I really like it. Um, it's by Pixite. Love it. Pigment. A couple of uh, responses from the chat room. First, uh, Graphite was purchased by Auto. Uh, Graphic oh, was purchased by, by Autodeck. It, it was the originally I draw, and then when Autodeck purchased it, Autodesk purchased it, mm -hmm. they renamed it and added quite a bit. And then another person in our chat room is telling me that this hat is uh, the official kind of ceremonial hat of Eudorkistan. <laughs> so I think uh, that's correct. Yeah. That sounds correct to me. Yes. So I don't know why we've not mentioned this uh, before. Somebody was saying that, well, I wish we had uh, a better uh, podcast app. We've talked about Overcast. I think that was one of your picks. Marco Arment mm -hmm. makes a great podcast app for iOS, but the problem is it's only audio. This show, and in fact, all the shows we do are video, and there's some great video out there, too. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to have a podcast app that did both. And let's add some more things to it. It'd be nice to have a podcast app that syncs your subscription, so keep track of them, so you could have it on uh, multiple devices uh, that would be totally cross-platform. This is the one. It's called Pocket Casts. I actually, to be fair, oh, look, that really gets in this shot, doesn't it? To be fair, I, uh, I found this on Android, and I was thrilled to find it on iOS because it made it possible for me to share my existing podcast subscriptions. Uh, just You just log into your account, which is free, by the way. Uh, they also, of course, as as do most, have uh, pick you know suggestions. They have uh, top charts. That's always an important part about podcasts: is how to how to find the next podcast. And I'm happy to say they have networks, including the Twit Network. So that makes it very easy, for instance, to find all of our shows. And as I mentioned, all of our shows are available both in audio and in video, and this app supports it. So if you have a nice high res iPad and you have enough storage space, pick the Video HD. I'm already subscribed to that. And let's go back because we can uh, we can actually uh, watch it. Um, this is one of the apps I subscribe to. So if you if you listen uh, to an uh, 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 you know a show, you can just play it just like this, and it has a lot of the features that people uh, love about Overcast, and including the ability to uh, s <laughs> skip over intros. That's funny. That must be a real problem. Uh, auto download is nice notifications. Auto cleanup is handy because you can say, you know, don't keep get rid of episodes after I've listened to them or only keep the most recent five. I like to do that because I don't want to listen to old episodes, but you may not uh, want to do that. Um, you know, I guess I didn't plug in my audio, uh, Jack, so you mm. probably, you know, you don't need to, you don't need to hear the, the podcast because that's not important. What you wanted to know, what somebody wanted to know is can I watch them? And you bet you can. Even better, you can airplay it. So we were talking, remember, about uh, airplaying um, uh, to the Apple TV. Right. This will do that. Uh -huh. uh, and it will also, it supports Chromecast. So you can also Chromecast to it. But airplaying is very simple. You just select airplay down here from your control center. Uh, I, don't, I don't see where the Chromecast is. Share link to episode, current position, open file in. You can open it in, once you've downloaded it in other apps as well. Um, I don't. I have to figure out where the Chromecast button is. I'm sure there is one somewhere because they do say this supports Chromecast. And like Overcast, as we mentioned, and I know a lot of you like to do this, you can pick a playback speed, even for video. So if you want the pat the show to go fast, you can choose 3x and it'll play back really, really fast. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, so that is really a great app. Pocket Casts. I actually think it's one of the best uh, podcast apps on any platform. Um, and it does do video, and it has a lot of the features uh, that you would like, including skips. You can turn off the artwork. You can have notifications when there's new stuff. You can have store, you know, save on storage. A lot of good features to this, um, including uh, fast playback. Although unlike uh, Marco's app, the fast playback only happens when you're actually listening, uh, and then you can choose the speed as you are listening to it. I think somewhere. Pretty sure you can do that, but I don't see it. Did it on? It's funny that it did on video, but I don't see it here. Mm. Uh, Pocket casts. 
I listen at the real speed. It makes me nervous when it goes it's too a, fast. Yeah, I think I personally, I think I talk fast enough. Don't speed me up any more than. <laughs> and syncing with your free account, which is really handy. So there's our app caps. There's our show. There's our show. There's our year. Our last show of the year. Next week, we're going to not do a best of. I mean, there were many moments, mm -hmm. but you can go back and watch every single show and you won't have to worry about it. Right. But you do. we do have a special show for you. We're going to unwrap our presents and show mm -hmm. you how to set them up. Mm-hmm. Including the Apple TV, the iPhone, and the Apple Watch. Yeah. So call us over break, 757-504-iPad. We won't be here. We'll but leave a the message and then we yeah. will play it on the show. Send us videos. Uh, email us. Find us on Twitter. Uh, we love your feedback. We love your questions. What is our Twitter handle? iOS Today? Uh, I, I was just going to say Megan Maroney on Twitter or oh. Leo Laporte on Twitter. Okay. We don't have a Twitter I don't account. think we have. I okay. think we came late to the iOS since it was a new. I think somebody already owned Somebody it. already owned that one. iOS oh, Today. Man, so, I hate when that happens. Um, but, you know, why do we need that? We've got we don't us. We need that. Yeah. you got us. Yeah. Leo Laporte, Megan Maroney. Easy. Yep. And thanks for watching. Happy Christmas if you celebrate. Happy New Year if you celebrate that. Uh, we will be back January 4th with a brand new live episode. I'll be tanned, rested, and ready to harass Megan. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>